Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Marike Visser, and I'm speaking to you from Suriname, my home country. And uh, welcome to the Catapult Lockdown Virtual Salon program. This afternoon, I will be in discussion with Katrina Coombs from Jamaica. Before we begin, I'd like to express huge thanks to the Catapult partners, including the American Friends of Jamaica, Kingston Creative and Fresh Milk for making this series of salons happen. Thank you. Please feel free to ask your questions in the comments section during the talk, which we'll get to in the Q&A segment of the salon. Have a nice time. And I want to say welcome, Katrina. Hi, thank you. <laughs> welcome. Hi, Katrina. Katrina is a Jamaica-based textile artist. She studied at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts in 2008, she graduated from the college with a BFA in textiles and fiber arts. In 2013, she obtained an MFA in creative practice from the Transart Institute via the University of Plymouth. Katrina's own words that immediately spoke to me when I started to read about her. My practice is a multifaceted exploration of the I, the other, and the mother as a woman attempting to identify her role in society. It is inspired and guided by a quest to deepen the spiritual, emotional, and psychological understanding of the numerous conflicting roles that have been attributed to women in contemporary society especially by those who are closest to us. Your theme uh, spoke very uh, much to me. And uh, can you tell us a bit more about how you started exploring this theme? At which phase of your um, being an artist? Okay, so this theme really came into its full capacity when I started with my master's at Transart Institute, where I pretty much was encouraged and guided to interrogate what is the real issue within my practice, what is it that I am focused on, and at that point of interrogating, I also had an advisor who was all about psychoanalysis and she got me hooked on it as well. So I found okay. myself going deep into that and investigation, investigating the notion of the other. Who is the other? What is the other? And how that relates to the existence of the I, who is me, you know? And I started to investigate how, or at least who, I consider to be my others within my practice. Because when I looked at my works, I realized that they captured a specific moment, but also an energy in relation to someone in specific or an event that had happened within a certain moment in time. And through that, I, I think one of the issues that all women kind of face is in terms of finding out who we are, our identity, we're always questioning how we're always questioned as to how we carry ourselves, how we dress, how we talk. We're expected to, to do certain chores, certain domestic duties, mainly because of our sex. So I kind of found myself grappling with service to the other and service to 13 specific persons that were in my life. And I just kind of zoned into those persons and interrogated those, those in my those, practice. Yeah. Are those real persons? They're real persons. There are yeah. 13 real persons, um, varying from mother, father, lover, co worker, lost child, best friend. So they all varied, and I kind of interrogated each individual person through fiber. And um, I found myself looking on the notion of weight 
and how weight impacts you. And weight, supplemental weight, real and surreal weight in the sense of, um, I don't know how many have ever tried this, but you know where you're carrying, you put something light in your hand and you hold your hand out. As light as it is, the longer you're holding and carrying it, the heavier that object gets within the hand. Yes. And so I started to investigate that with the fabric itself and creating these forms that were then used to carry. And I did performances where I was carrying these saps you know, that were representative of the luggage almost that they have left, the impact that they have placed on me. And carrying that for a moment in time and then moving into, I mean, that project, it kind of went through multiple phases for me to understand, but that's really what started me out with investigating the other and I. And then moving into the mother, that was uh, based on my own personal experience when, I now realize that, that there really is one significant other that has impacted me the most. So through investigating those, I also realized that even though they seem to have this large weight within me, they are not the ones that are guiding my practice and how I am creating and what it is that I do in my practice. Yes, yes. So it has been just really an investigation of myself initially that's really where, where, where the initial stages were and then moving into the interrogation of the mother the maternal figure and the body so the other translated now beyond just being an external person but now an external being the womb where the womb itself gets othered by us as women and even by men and our interaction with everybody so the body then becomes an other separated from the eye. Yes. So that's yes. kind of what but you have, a, you have a very clear idea about your theme. Uh, has this always been this clear? Um, not necessarily. I think I struggled a little bit in the initial stages, as I think most artists do, especially yeah. when you're studying and you're young, like, doing my first degree, you know, you kind of try to meet the market or meet what is expected of you. Yes. When I was in my first degree at Edna, it was about sales <laughs> and trying to, fiber arts as well isn't necessarily a medium that is expect, accepted right throughout as a high, high art or fine art. And because of that, within Jamaica, it was a struggle, you know, and I found my attempting to create works within the box literally square okay. framed um, yeah. of that you know and it wasn't until the masters where I was really able to say okay step out of that zone step out the zone of Jamaica and it's so important to go outside of your home zone because you learn so much and going in a location in which I was surrounded by so many different types of artists performers painters, photographers, writers, it now just became, rather than a medium <laughs> that, you know, you're a painter, you're a fiber artist, it became, you're just an artist and it doesn't matter necessarily what medium it is you're exploring, that medium is just the element that you use to meet the message that you desire to deliver to your audience or to okay. yourself. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, uh, you started very early, I heard you tell me, um, you told oh. me a story <laughs> okay, um, about, about your in mother. Terms of, in, I've always loved fiber. All right. uh -huh. I've, I've had a fascination with fiber as a medium. I've always felt myself to be spiritually connected to the medium of fiber. And um, I guess you could say that I probably started from within the womb because I, I was delayed by 10 days or so, um, mainly because I had the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. So I guess you, you could say that I started playing with it from in the womb. And it's quite interesting in terms of the fact that at this point in time, my practice is surrounded by the notion of the womb. So maybe I want to. <laughs> okay. But yeah. yeah, so that's kind of... Yeah. <laughs> I love I love that story and you know uh, 
you are a textile artist. You yes. work with fiber. And uh, I told you, uh, I, I love that. I, I love textile arts too. Um, I'm also familiar with it from my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but the way you talk about fiber, it is, is, it is just, I, I love to see it. Your face starts glowing. And uh, <laughs> have you well, always uh, um, had this, this love for, the, for textile and fiber? I mean, I began working, really working with it in high school when I was introduced to macrame, which I really don't use in my practice now. Certainly. Um, but that's really where I got the intro to the medium. And I think at that point, I just fell in love with them. The fact that, you know, you have something so simple, so light, so delicate that can be put together by knots or weaving or crocheting and just building and shaping form. And for me, it's just been a constant exploration of the medium as to where it can go, what boundaries can I take. Um, and as well as even just allowing the material itself to breathe, to yes. be and exist, you know. So that's kind of what really drives me with the medium itself. There's just so much that I think that can happen with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's um, great to see some work um, in the next uh, segments um, and we can walk through your uh, career using the images as threads first the first piece we see is void please katrina tell us something more about it okay so fiber as a medium for me is very spiritual it's very connected to my who i am it's very connected to what is happening within me and around me in that very moment um, and it's really something that I think it's right across the board in all ethnic groups across the world, where as a weaver, you are telling stories and you are telling stories of that moment. And for me, with Floyd, this is a moment of loss. Um, and it's and that's kind of what majority of my work at this point in time started to take life with by looking on the notion of loss and what loss is. Um, and this, this piece really came out after I finished my master's and I began to... And what um, year is this look, piece? This is 2015. This was done in okay. 2015. It was a part of Young Talent Exhibition at the National Gallery. Um, in which the National, 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 Gallery Gallery of Jamaica. National Gallery of Jamaica, yes. Okay. Um, I had proposed to, to do this, and this is the largest piece that I did initially at that point in time. And I really mm -hmm. was attempting to push the material, but also the piece in itself encapsulated the presence of the loss of a father, my father, and the loss of a child. Um, and just hold the notion of that void is so pure, the energy of that void, it is so pure, it's so present, it's so subliminal, it ruptures the soul. You can also show the other image um, where it, it ruptures the soul, but yet it's present, but yet it's not even there. Mm -hmm. And even with the, its presence, it is heavy and it is light. And I kind of find that I play a lot on these different elements as I create. Um, so that's really with this work as the whole, that kind of developed into what it is here, void. And it's really looking on the love of the other. It's really looking on just the space that that other held within yes, my existence yes. and my being. Yeah. Yes. Um, and even with looking at that, when interrogating the other from that perspective through loss, and identifying what is the trace within that loss, I realized that I had not peeled from the loss of my own child um, and how that had impacted me. I mean, it happened in 2005 and I'm back in 2015 and I'm still not necessarily, I haven't embraced it. I haven't even stopped to look at what the issues were. And I ended up going on a residency in um, Colombia through Diaspora Vibe Oh, forgive me, <laughs> Davidoff Arts Initiative um, in 
2018 where I went to Floral and that was the first time that I was able to actually be in a space on my own. <laughs> like there's oh, no family wow. and no work for a long period. That was three months. And I found that I was able to dive into the meat of the matter um, within my practice. No, I had nothing yes. else <laughs> around me, nothing to distract me. I had full, I had this full studio space. I had materials to work with. I just needed to let go. And with you told that, me, you told me uh, that um, your your family is very supportive, but yes. still, it is sometimes it's necessary to just be on your own. It is always necessary to be on yeah. your own at some point. Yeah. Um, the family, my family, is, is supportive of me and my practice. I love them. They, they've always been on my side. It's been a struggle, I'd admit, because you know, fiber arts is not necessarily seen as something that you can find lucrative. But I had to push and make the way and show the way that yes, this is what I want to do. This is what I love, and I am going to do it. Yes. And, um, so and with the issue that I was really dealing with and grappling with, I couldn't really be able to speak with my family. You know, I, I still probably can't. But it's just a matter of being with the self to understand and being with the material and allowing the research to support it. Um, I think that within the residency really helped me and I think that led to Grounded, if we could see the other work please, um, which that became the interrogation of the loss of the child and grounded myself. So this piece, it was really looking on fiber as a medium for spiritual connection, fiber as a medium of connecting with the identity of the woman. I mean, when you look at some ethnic groups in Colombia, the way who, whereas um, fiber becomes, weaving becomes this almost rites of passage for the girls. Once you're seen your first cycle, you mentioned a cycle, immediately you're put aside and you go through all sorts of rituals. And one of these major rituals is really learning how to weave. And I think yes. in Lehu culture, I am just so fascinated with oh, the woman become the lead, the literal lead in terms of the children bears the name of the woman as opposed to the father, the mother instead of the father and the whole, um, the homes are there, the, the property becomes there, they are the head of the clan, you know, they're the chieftain, the mother chieftain so much, but then no weaving, weaving was also a matter of showing your position, your stance within the community. The title you is the more detailed weaves are, that ended up determining your stance in society as a woman, yeah. you know, and I found myself really investigating that a bit in my work while I was in Colombia, but it also brought me back to home in terms of attempting to ground myself and understand the notion of grounding and my own existence, so then I I was looking, you asked me the story about my mom, I was looking at the umbilical cord and how that relates to the womb, how it is, how the placenta in itself becomes this object in which determines both your life and the life of the child. Yes. You know, and without it, if, if that ruptures, both of you are at risk, you yes. know, and how that encapsulates our very being and our very existence and it kind of I started working on this just doing all these tentacles that I was playing all over in the space and then I kind of settled on the notion of grounding myself and being grounded with what is and what had happened and in order to do that I felt I needed to be with the material and to be encapsulated by the material itself and by this notion of the mother, the notion of the womb, the notion of myself as a mother, yes. my mother as a mother, and the child that wasn't no longer present. And how these issues are really central and universal, but yet we really don't speak to it, right? We're always timid about speaking towards it, both the opposite sex, both us to ourselves. It happened, you lost a child, whether if it's through um, miscarriage, abortion, um, a death of uh, early death or stillbirth, it doesn't matter what 
caused this loss. It is a loss and it's a loss that I think we really need to speak more towards and embrace as something that feeds with our existence. And um, that's kind of coming out of that piece grounded, I decided to, you know, I needed to be a part of it. And I went into Wandering Womb and into a little bit more with performance space, if we could see the video. Um, so that video, it's really... So that was a small snippet of a 15 minute performance that I had done in relation and reaction to that. So, yeah. <laughs> you did this in Colombia? Yes, that was done in Colombia. Yeah. That was done yeah. in Colombia. And this is the first time that you uh, used a performance as well uh, in your uh, art? No. No, actually, I had investigated one piece in my master's. Okay. Um, that was really, you know, when you're studying that specific to studying, this one was really okay. more towards, okay, this is really where I want to go with my practice. This is really yes. something that I think there is value in. I mean, I've always wanted to do performance, um, but I think for me with performance, the value is with the body versus the object of the fiber of fiber okay. and that medium and weaving and how that relates to the existence of the it woman, to the a, woman's identity. It's a dialogue. It's, yes, so it's a dialogue yeah. between the two and their relation. Yeah. Um, so that kind of really sparked me. And I guess being in Colombia made me feel as if I was in a safe zone, you yes. know, where I could actually really dive into this. Um, there's no judgment as much as home is supportive and I am very grateful for everything that has been given towards me um it's it is the home and it is the most it's the place that you feel criticized the most so in terms yes. of really letting go you fear that but being in circumstances where okay nobody really knows and they really can't judge you you're, you're able to really be free yes. with the work and allow it to become what it needs to be. Yes. Did you feel uh, that once you uh, came this far uh, away from home, um, do you feel that you have um, taken it to, a, to another level? Uh, or do you feel that it's something you have to overcome again 
when you're once you're home again? Um, I think I was able to take it to another level in terms of overcome. I found that that residency served me well <laughs> emotionally, um, physically. Mm -hmm. It was more much cathartic. Um, and at that point, I think what was most significant is that I found a release. Okay. And in releasing, it became reality and accepted, you know, for what it is and what it existed as. And in terms of identifying ways in which I now can move forward, you know, and I think that developed more as I went along and then I kind of ended up going on another residency in New York um, at Jim Gilbertsville Expressive Arts Movement and that space was so tranquil. Um, it was just out in, <laughs> it was out in the country area pretty much and all you're seeing is land, 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 nobody for far distances. Uh, you had mm -hmm. to go far to go get to a supermarket and I think that just literally even more Served my ties with reality, um, whereas now I am in this completely different space of mind and physical space, which now mm -hmm. allowed me to find peace within the work that I was producing and how I was making my work and the issue that I was facing with the loss and which was my personal loss. Um, if we could have the work transcend, uh, the next thing. <laughs> um, I, I want to, uh, um, if you have just uh, tuned in, um, my name is Marike Visser and I'm having a conversation with Katrina Combs from Jamaica. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask these and uh, put them in the Q&A <coughs> section uh, of the screen and we will get to that later. Please, uh, Katrina, uh, tell us more about your next work, okay. Transcend. All right, um, so the next work, Transcend, if we could have that image, please. Um, that was produced while I was in gym. Um, at this point, I found that I was a at peace with the circumstances and mm -hmm. I found that I was in the process of releasing I then accepted what is because you know as women we are constant it doesn't matter whether if you intend to be a mother or not you're always battling with the notion of your maternal instinct you know you're always battling with do I want to be do I not want to be um, you're always battling with your body itself because it does this natural bodily function of your cycle coming and going. I mean, you literally go through this process of loss on a constant basis where your body is ripping into itself and tearing itself. But yet it is also healing itself and renewing itself. And that kind of constantly happens within the woman and within women. We are constantly attacking ourselves but yet in the same breath, healing. And within this piece, I found myself being healed. I found myself being able to release that child. You know, I found myself now understanding the notion of the womb and of the maternal mother. You know, I don't have a child, <laughs> but it's always been this constant, thing on my mind. I might not have had a child, but I feel as if I've been constantly being a mother to those who are around me. And within Transcend, it was this moment of just allowing the material. This, there's really not much techniques in terms of, of fiber-based techniques that were explored other than the woven forms that are within the center. This, I allowed the material of the fiber to just exist. You know, and at this point, I was just existing. I had accepted and I'm able to now exist within myself, within my identity of who I am. I understood clearly at this point what had happened. And it is what it is, but yet it has shaped me and I embrace it. Yes. And, uh, so yes. In, in, in a lot of what I am doing, it's not just a matter of working through, but it's also understanding what it is for what it actually is. 
and what yes. we are as women and how we function and embrace that truth that exists within us and to be able to speak to that within my work and within the audience's interaction and relation to the work. Thank yeah. you. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> Uh, the catapult project is here because of COVID-19. How did the pandemic affect your practice? Um, I think well, everybody is kind of faced with similar situations. Um, the pandemic, well, I, I, the pandemic clashed with my very first solo show that I had. Yes. I was having my first solo show earlier this year, Iyame Aje. Um, and uh, I had the show the Saturday and by the Monday, Jamaica had its first COVID case and then everything just shut down. And there was yes. a, a, a bit of tension with the gallery as well, because it actually eventually closed because of within that same time period that my exhibition was supposed to be mounted and open to the public. So I pretty much had almost like a pop up exhibition, a one night show, which was absolutely fabulous. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I look back on it, as much as I had the COVID, which what should have been a one month show, it ended up being a one night show, even though that had happened. I think it served the purpose that it needed to have at that moment in time for me, because, you know, doing a solo show, it takes a lot. And as an artist, I've always, I've been practicing for a while, a, a long while, and people have always been saying, oh, you need to do a solo show. I need to see some work together, see a collection together. Mm -hmm. And I've held back, mainly because I felt it was necessary for me to grow and to understand my practice and to nurture that a bit more and also to kind of gain more of an audience, you know, and to, to allow the audience to understand what my practice is and how it has developed. And yes. that is kind of one of the reasons that I kind of held back on it. But after I went to, um, actually went on another residency in, Miami with that through diaspora vibe cultural arts incubator and yes residences yes. are you hear me speak a lot about residences because they've served me well um that at that point in time I it was less of a work residency where I was really focusing on creating even though I did create I found that no I was at a point of no re-interrogating my practice as to what am I you know, I've gone through that process of healing, of attacking and working through those issues. And then now I'm like, do I continue or do I not continue? And I had also went through the loss of my my grandma, which is just very interesting on the fact that everything has to do with loss in some way, shape or form with me. And um, I ended up on the residency. I just booked up this song, Ashun. And it just popped up in my feeds while I was playing music and it literally encapsulated me, spiritually, mm. emotionally. And I found myself now being connected back to my Af African ancestry and how that relates to my work. Because I've always been looking on different cultures with fiber and I know of the African background, but I have not necessarily embraced it. And at this okay. point in... When I returned home from that residency, I ended up setting up my studio where my grandmother spent her last years in. And I felt as if I was at a point in time in which, okay, this is the moment that I need to have that show. It's mm -hmm. time to show. <laughs> it's time to have the solo show. And in creating in this space, it was only right for me to do this in honor of her or in honor yes. to her. Um, and the exhibition, Iyami Aje, um, which is my mother God. <laughs> um, it really looks in the womb of existence. And so it's really in honor to the, the maternal nature and the maternal figure of woman, specifically towards my grandmother and also for my mother, because these are so very strong women who have influenced me in so many different ways. I can't even explain. I mean, yes, I, I might not have had a good relation in initial stages with my mom, but right about now we're like, you know, and with my grandma, and it happened when my grandmother came because then her presence, I then realized why my mother is the way she is and who she is. And in that, that helped to guide me 
as to why I am the way I am and how I relate to the both of them as women, you know. And I, love that, you know. I love that your studio is now uh, <laughs> in your grandmother's room. Yes. You've, you've yes. made your grandmother's room uh, your place of work and um, that's kind of a full circle. I it like is, that. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> because, um, uh, the exhibition, uh, even though it was such a disappointment that it only was uh, so, that it was cut short by COVID, you, I love that you really see the positive uh, of it, and it's a beautiful show and um, people can read about it on the internet. Uh, there are articles about it. And um, uh, yes, I, I think even though it was cut short, you made the most out, out of it. And you also interacted with a lot of uh, people from the audience yeah that, um, that is part of your work that you want the reaction you want to so as much as it is the works are about the female the mother yes. the maternal figure um our existence does relate to the opposite sex and how that guides us in terms of how we carry ourselves but within the exhibition, within all my works. I've always been fascinated with how the male, the man versus the woman and how they view the pieces because okay. they see them differently. They see the body differently. They view the vagina, they view the womb, they view the menstrual cycle completely differently. And when they see the works, they are confronted now almost with what this thing is or might be or might not be and how it is that each person takes their own definition of this and within the show um if we could have the next artwork within the show this specific work as it breathes life life is taken um this piece had <laughs> created a bit of a stir with both males and females as to what it is and what it could be. For the man, most of them saw it as the sexual object versus the woman who saw it as a, a spiritual entity or a passageway for birth and for life. But within the males, it was the notion of, okay, it's a libido, it's a vagina, this is the entryway. And then the woman, it was more like, no, nah, it's not talking about that. It's not talking about you entering me. You know, <laughs> there was one specific couple that I always remember who they stood there and they had a very heated argument, actually, about the piece and what it was meant to be. And the guy came over and he's like, no, 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 no. You need to explain what this work is. This is what I say it's about. And I believe this is it versus her, what her perspective was. And in terms of answering that, it is both. Both of our sexes view things differently. Both of us accept them and embrace things differently, but they're both valid and they're both right in their own sense. And it's just a matter of embracing these two and connecting them and accepting. Okay. The moment that we are able to accept, right, and understand, understand and accept each other's views and perspective, then we will be able to find ourselves in a zone of understanding, you know, a zone of comfort yes. and a zone of freedom to be and to exist as we are, you know. I mean, it's fine talking about the menstrual cycle. We shouldn't be fearful. If you've lost a child, it is painful, but we should be able to embrace what that is and to speak to it without the negative stigma that may be struck around it. And the moment that we are able to understand this and to open up, you know, and to speak to it and be, because it is and we exist, you know, yes. and yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Um, before COVID-19 changed everything, you had plans for participating in the Kingston Biennial, which now has been postponed. 
but you are working in your studio space uh -huh. in your grandmother's room <laughs> and you are working on a project uh, can you share something about uh, the work you are doing okay now? so i'm working on the apocalypse um <laughs> which ultimately is I'm at a point in which I'm seeing value in the performance, or at least I find it necessary for me to, to push work forward, which includes the performance um, aspect of it. And uh, currently I am working on a piece that looks on loss, the loss of a child from all angles. And uh, not just from my own individual voice, I found myself now taking the voice of others because the more that I create, the more that I have discussions around these circumstances, I've now, or at least I've now seen the experiences of others. And there's so many persons, so many women and men who have gone through this sense of loss that that is not necessarily being spoken to. So this piece is really going to be interrogating their loss and their voice and letting their voice be heard and spoken to. Whereas it includes the performance of, it includes five um, elements, which is the sculptural piece, which is always needs to be present. The words of persons who have actually gone through this loss. Um, the two, there are two characters, um, which represent the two different psychomentality of someone who has gone through loss, which is the mask, which is constantly being worn within the public, what you see, and then the voices within which pretty much tears one apart internally. So, um, and then there's the audience who will play a very significant role within this. So, I need COVID-19 to hurry up and go so I can actually present this work because it requires that. And I find that no, with everything that I've, that I am, the projects that I am working towards, they all need the audience's interaction. They all are guided with some sense of performative action with the fiber, whether if there is an, a, a, a performer or if it's a performance between the audience and the work. So that's kind of where I think, that's kind of where my practice is going at this point in time. So, yes. and, in collecting, and in collecting stories of loss, by the way, I am collecting from anyone who is open and willing and ready. Or you don't even have to be ready to share their story because the stories will be written or sections of it. And um, these stories would be read out loud and be presented in different ways, shapes and forms. And a name is very significant. It doesn't need necessarily need to be your name. It can be the name of the child, an alias, first name, second name, last name, whatever it is. But the name, I think, is very significant in doing a piece such as this because it is a person who has gone through this experience. There yes, is a yes. person that has been has gone through it or is lost by it. And in speaking the name, they are given a place. And I think that is kind of what I'm working towards. So if anybody feels like hooking me up with some stories, you can go ahead in terms of your own experiences. I am accepting any story. Um, and I have been collecting. I have quite a lot going through. Um, but I just, I just wanted to open the floor as it pertains to that. But the work really is to give a voice and to give a voice to others. So that's where I'm going. <laughs> I think it's a, a beautiful project, also because of my own experience as a mother who lost a child. And I will be sharing my story with Katrina, and um, I hope more people will do so. It's very important to um, give a voice to people who, who are not heard. And, um, saying names is important, is very important. Um, Katrina, you say, say for this project, you, you need uh, an audience, so you need for COVID to be over with. <laughs> we all need COVID to be over with, um, but you still, uh, you, 
you, I find it remarkable how um, many how visible you are. Uh, yesterday you had an opening, but before we get to that, we will get to the uh, questions and answers segment of of this uh, uh, hour, and um, please leave questions for us in the Q and A box. Um, Cortina, yesterday you had an opening in Canada. <laughs> and yes. Uh, uh, tell us about that. Okay. All right. So um, that was uh, ooh, one night start at sea, a Caribbean, a contemporary Caribbean art exhibition done by, well, it's at the Peel Arts Gallery. Yes. I'm trying to remember things. So. Um, it's at the Peel Arts Gallery and Museum in Ontario, Canada. It was curated by Karen Carter and Greg Manuel. Um, so it was. It's a. It's a part of a larger activity that they're doing, where they're doing a Caribbean art fair. They they inaugurated it here in Jamaica in Mandeville earlier in the year, and that's actually where I met them. Thanks, Laura Casey. Um, and I was invited to be a part of this show. So now they were then carrying it out of the Caribbean in to Canada because they know they saw the necessity for more Caribbean artists to come together, you know, and to be presenting work as one unit and as one body. It's kind of like catapult, which I think is kind of really amazing. Oh, it yeah. brings us all together from Beautiful. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So a couple of those works in that solo show as well are being seen there. So it's open to the public. <laughs> and another another uh, exhibition I wanted to mention is Intersectionality, Diaspora Art from the Creole yes. City, which now shows at the Harvey B. Gantt Center Harvey B. for Gantt. Mm -hmm. African American Arts and Culture in Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. So yes, again, uh, that's another. That's another amazing exhibition um, yes. with a group, Diaspora Vibe Cultural Arts Incubator, who are really supporting, have been supporting the arts for 25 years now um, in Miami. Um, so support them. <laughs> I think they're doing an yes. annual year thing. Yeah, so. It's, yeah. it's uh, just good to say that uh, there are many good organizations doing, doing a lot of good work. Yes. And as, especially yes. at this time, uh, we need it so much and um, okay, we complain a lot about social media, but then again, <laughs> it's it's also good that we have social media. Yes. Uh, for example, you, I, I, early, I said earlier, you are very, very visible on the internet. Uh, I found it easy to find information about you and to see works and you know, and now you have your own Instagram page, so I recommend that you go follow it. Okay. <laughs> um, you you said that like a like a kind of a motto: um, do more, show more, be seen more. <laughs> and you decided this in two thousand fifteen. Um, actually, a little bit before that. Um, okay. I think it was like, yeah, it was before that. Um, but it was very significant for me after traveling and seeing things and just learning. I, I decided that I needed to understand this art world a little bit more. And um, I realized that you need to really make yourself present and consistent. As an artist, consistency is key. All right. Yeah. So we got to just, you, you have to be consistent with creating, with showing, and just be present. Be yes. present. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you for for being present. And um, <laughs> I would like to know. Um, um, can we go on to the uh, Q and A segment? Here is a question from Matilda dos Santos. Thank you, Matilda. The material really does fit with the idea of the womb, life, and loss. Can you come back to the idea of having a spiritual connection with the fiber? Why, how, and what does it mean to you? 
Well, it's my existence. <laughs> I mean, um, when I when I am with the material, I feel at home. I do feel at home. I feel safe and I feel secure. So I think in some ways I may end up being creating my own womb, that my own security net, you know. Um, but spiritually, I I feel as if it breeds my life and it breeds who I am. Um, yeah, I don't think I can live without it at this point in time. But no. yeah. <laughs> so answer to that question. Thank you. Um, thanks. Thank you for that question, by the way. <laughs> yes. Matilda, I hope that answers your question. And can we have yeah. another question? <laughs> Author Girl 44. Thank you. Are there any countries you especially would like to do a res residency in? And have you ever done a residency in Jamaica? Do you think it is possible to experience that same freedom in a local space? I'm interested. Um, that is a very interesting question. It actually uh -huh. has to do with even the most recent piece that I've created. I am creating, actually. Um, so I've never done a residency in Jamaica. I have hosted residences though. I'm also the co-curator with Black Manga Consultants where I do curating and uh, promotion of artists, specifically for young artists coming up. Where in, not this year, but the last two years, we had an artist residency held at Grosna Gallery um, where we put together each year three young artists coming up and allow them to just have that freedom, that space to create and to be and to exist. Um, in terms of doing a residency outside, uh, where, if there's a specific place, I want to go everywhere. Because for me, the issues that I am focusing on, it is universal, it is present in every single location, but also the medium of fiber, it is constantly available. It's constantly a sense of ancestry within that country. There's always some link everywhere that I have been. I've always constantly been looking on, okay, what is the ancestry of fiber within this country? And then there is just this constant connecting thread of femininity, there's this constant connecting thread of transition and rituals with, around the medium. Um, and in terms of experiencing the same freedom in my local space, I've struggled with that, I will admit. <laughs> um, with performing and, and experience, in, with performing locally or even just presenting my work, I've always constantly criticized my work and wondered, okay, how is it going to be embraced here and locally? I find that when I go overseas, I'm more comfortable, right? And honestly, that's because at home, home is your biggest critic. <laughs> I mean, you are your biggest critic and you yourself are home. And the persons who you're here with, they know you. They know what has happened around you or something similar. And they're the ones that you have to live and exist with. Versus when okay. I travel, I don't live and exist with those okay. people, even though I know I meet them, I keep connections with them. They are there and I am here. But um, I am at the point, especially with this piece that I am creating at this point in time, um, looking on the loss of the child with others, uh, with other women and pulling that together. That piece is actually must for me as an artist happen here and with the performance and me being one of the performers here. And I think that is a significant mark for me with my practice and with mm -hmm. me moving forward mm -hmm. is to then know, find my home and to be at home and allow, okay, guys, this is it. Because even with the work, my truth will be revealed. All right, my full truth will be revealed because my stories will be amongst. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. that for me is something I am now working through and attempting to go directly towards so in terms of being comfortable at home it's been a work through <laughs> mentally emotionally physically the whole work um in finding my place i it's think the, a matter of the finding a place and security. i think the residency in uh, colombia was kind of pivotal in that yes 
Yes. Yeah. Because with that residency in Colombia, that was when I actually faced it. <laughs> yes. So before I was kind of like touch and go. I I would do a piece here and there, just little elements mm -hmm. within it, not necessarily directly in the situation in any way, shape or form. Um, but then now for me with where I am at a position where home is where I need to release this mm -hmm. and move forward from it. It is no longer a burden that I feel anymore. I can scream it out to the top of the <laughs> on the top of the hill and I feel safe and I feel comfortable. So um, at this point I think I've come over that boundary that was kind of holding me back from being free. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's also a matter of, you know, you're producing your work and you're working through it and you're showing it and you're getting the feedback and you're getting comfortable because working, it does take time and it's, it's, it's a lot, <laughs> you know, but it's as you work and you create and you put forward, you get more feedback. And that's the same thing with the issues that I'm dealing with. The more you talk about it and dialogue with it, you find other people who can relate to and in finding that, the, in finding commonality, you find security, and in commonality, you find your safety net as well. So, yes, yeah. And you are also, in a way, creating a safety net for others. Yes. 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 And in turn, because you touch on subjects and which yes, which are creating a safety net for others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Can I ask uh, how important is it that you are Jamaican? Because it seems to me that uh, while you felt freer uh, away from home, you felt a, a sort of a freedom. But it is very important to to create that that art at home it so is actually i don't think i yeah. i i don't think that i would live anywhere else but jamaica i would travel yes. and i'll do residences there because it's about finding and learning and, and embracing my yes. practice and pulling things together but in terms this is this is home <laughs> you know okay. and this is my safety net this is my womb you know and um as a jamaican i I exist in a space where there is just so much culture dynamics as everything, every one comes together. It doesn't matter what your race may be. I think Jamaica is uh, one of the freest countries in the world. I love Jamaica. As with uh, traveling, you notice all of the restrictions that there are elsewhere. I mean, even with the issues that are being faced as it pertains to um, women working, you know, and pay. The pay differences between men and women and how men relate to women. You really do not find that here for a woman. We are always able to be strong. We're always able to present ourselves and not fear ourselves. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about Jamaican women where we're always pushing forward. We will take the lead. We will do what needs to be done with no shame, no fear, you know, um, this is our identity and who we are. And it's all of the different cultures that come, all of the slaves from Africa, the English, the Spanish, the American, every, the Arawaks, all of our cultures kind of just colliding together in a space that we can be free, we can yes. be open, you know, and we can be who we desire to be there. I mean, yes, there are, don't get me wrong, there are issues <laughs> and there are restrictions that are placed with it because of our culture, different cultures that collide and clash at times. But even with that clash, there is still freedom to be. So I am here. <laughs> Katrina, I have to finish. Um, yes. It's almost the time. Um, I Please remember to tune in again at 4 p.m. Uh, AST this afternoon for my discussion with Trinidadian um, visual artist Gabriella Wilkes. And uh, I hope we have a, such a nice conversation as with Katrina. Thank you. Thank you. And thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> and in closing today's salon, I like to express huge thanks to the Catapult partners, including the American Friends of Jamaica, Kingston Creative, and Fresh Milk for making this series of salons happen. 
Thank you very much. Thank you all.